An input mask is a pattern for all data to be entered into a field. So when I'm looking at a field, do they have patterns? And if so, I can create an input mask that will tell the front end user, hey, I would like to have it in this pattern or this display. So for example, when you look at employee ID, there's a pattern. First two letters are EE for employee, and then a number, a dash, and then two numbers. And another is like the zip code. So instead of having just five digits, I've got a dash and four. And for like the phone number, we've got the area code, three digits, dash, and then four. Now, before I started the video, I created an input mask for the zip code field. So when the user is typing in information and hits this field right here, there's an input mask. In other words, you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, how many digits do I enter into this field? Oh, sure, you can cheat and look up above and go, okay, it's the five-digit zip code plus four more. But if this was the first field in the table, you wouldn't really know, except when you see that you start typing and go, okay, I'll type in the first five digits, and you're like, what? There's still more space. Oh, I guess he wants more. So let me go ahead and get the rest of that zip code there, the last four digits. So that way, when you're finished typing over the mask and it disappears, your input has finished. And then you can go ahead and continue on. Let me hit the escape key to get out of this because I don't want to save it. And so let's go ahead and create one using an input mask for the phone number. So when I click in there, well, how many numbers do I put in and where? So we can go ahead and control the user's input or at least give them an idea by having a mask they can go ahead and type over it. When you're done typing over it and you don't see any more, your input is finished. So for the phone field, let's go ahead and come up here, right click, go to the design view, and let's go to the phone. And then down below in its field properties, it's right there, input mask. Go ahead and click in its adjacent field, and then click on the three dots there, the build button. And before I click on it, if you click in any one of these fields here, it says over to the right, it gives you a synopsis, like what that's about. And this is a pattern for all data to be entered into this field. Okay, that's nice. Now that we have a little bit more clarity, let's go ahead and click on it. And there we go. We have some default masks here. And it says which input mask matches how you want the data to look. Well, it's going to be the phone number. Well, that worked out well. Let's go ahead and with it selected, come down below and try it. So click in the field and that's what it looks like. Oh, that's a nice try. I'll go ahead and just type it in. Ooh, that's so fancy. And so you can go ahead and do it that way. And if you like it, go ahead and click Next, and it'll allow for a little bit of tweakage. And there's the phone number, the input mask. And we'll go over the coding in just a little bit. But for right now, down below it says when it comes to the placeholder character, the default was the underscore. So when they came down below and they started typing, it was all the underscore. As soon as you're done typing and you don't see any more underscores, well, then your data input has been completed, except I skipped the first two. Let's go ahead and delete that. And let's change that to, what else you got? Oh, not too much, but let's do pound symbols. And then go ahead and try it. Come down below and, oh, that's nice. It's really definitive now. So when those pound symbols are all done, then I'm done. Okay, I'll go with that. Let's click Next. Now when it comes to these built-in templates here, you don't have to have the symbols stored in the database. You can actually store the data without the symbols, and it will still show the symbols. So I'll say without the symbols, try to save a little bit of space, and then go ahead and click Next. Hey, that's it. We're done. Click Finish. Let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Oh, wait a second. And there's the symbols down below, the coding. I'll go over that in just a second here. Let's go ahead and click on the View button. Save our work. Let's go ahead and scroll down, or I could have clicked on the New Record button to get to the last line. And then go ahead and click in the Phone field, and hey, there's our mask. So 801, 555, 1, 2, 3, 4. As soon as I'm done typing over the mask, my input work has been completed. Nice. Let's go ahead and hit the Escape key. And let's come over here and do another one, this time one that's not pre-built for us. Let's do it for our own employee ID. So when I click in here, if I didn't have anything up above to reference, like it was a, you know, a new table, or I'm in a form with, on a new record, and I haven't seen what the others looked like, then let's go ahead and put an input mask, kind of give them an idea of, well, the pattern of what needs to be typed in the employee ID field. As you can see, there's none there. So let's go ahead and go back to the design view, go to the employee ID field, 
Come down below, click in the input mask, the field properties for the selected employee ID field. Come over here, click on the build button, and well, it's already right there, but let's pretend that we don't have that, okay? And let's start from scratch. Click on edit list, and you can go ahead and go through these records here, and there's a total of four. Well, I created the employee ID here, but uh, just ignore that. We're going to start from scratch. Let's say that it's not there, and click on new blank record. So this will be our employee ID, well, number two, since I already have the first one in there. And now for the input mask. Okay, we're going to start with the exclamation point, and what that does is it allows the mask to be filled in from left to right. So when we get to the field, it starts over on the left-hand side. Well, that's nice. Okay, and then let's go ahead and type in LL. Now, L represents text, so we want to make sure that we have one for each letter in the employee ID, EE, -E, so I put in two L's. And then we want a number, so I'll type in a zero. Oh, there we go. Now you can see it. And the zero is for single digits, and then we want a dash, and then, of course, we want two more single digits after that. And then hit the tab key, and then the placeholder. Well, you can do the underscore, or you can do the pound symbol, but they may be confused if I do the pound symbol because they may think, oh, the pound symbol for the LL, I'm supposed to type in numbers. It's not going to be perfect, but it's just a pattern for them to look at. And I can come down below, and you have to give it sample data. If you don't give it sample data, it won't save. So we can go ahead and do EE1. Five, five. Okay, great. Now there's not a save button here, but it will save. So when I close out, if I go ahead and go back to edit the list, how many records do I have? Instead of five, I have six now. So if I want to go back and make changes, then I can come over here and, well, there's the employee ID for that one, and here's the one that we did just now. So employee ID number two, close out. Let's go ahead and scroll down to find it. So there's the one I did before the training video. Here's the one that we did just now, employee ID number two. We can come down below and try it, and if I try to type in a number, it requires text. Now remember, the first two are characters, so it has to be letters, so EE, -E. and then the rest has to be numbers. So if I try to type in text, like another E, I get this bong. You can go ahead and try it. You'll get the bong, and then 155. Five. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and click Next. And there we go, Employee ID, the placeholder. Well, you can actually change it if you want at this point, but I'll leave it as underscore, and of course, you can go ahead and try it again, type it in and then click Next, and it will store it without symbols. Now, when it comes to a custom mask, if I store it without symbols, it won't add the dash. So let me show you. Click Finish, go ahead and click on the View button, save our work, and click on New Record. So when I type in EE, -E, and I type in 1, 55, and let's see, hold down the Shift key, hit Enter to see if it saves it. Okay, didn't have to enter in anything else, it saved it. But it didn't store the symbol. Okay, that's a problem. Let's go ahead and right-click on this and delete the record, say yes. Let's go back to the design view, and let's go ahead and edit this by clicking on its build button, and then going down to number two. Select, click next, click next. This time we want the symbols to be stored, and click finish, and then click view. Of course, we've got to save our work. Come down here, click on new blank record, EE. 156. Hit the tab key and hey, there's the symbol. Oh, that's nice. And then, of course, go ahead and type in all the rest of your fields. And remember, when you get to those other fields that have the input mask, you're done inputting the data in the field when the masking has been completely eliminated. No more mask. I'm done. And then our phone number 801. Ta 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 ta. Shift enter. And well, I'll come back and enter in the rest. Maybe. Well, let me just go ahead and right click and delete it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.